Hi friends, hello the world. Welcome to this Tools for Transitioning Humanitarians uh, podcast episode that I am so excited to talk about because the topic that I have chosen today is one that you probably have never heard and that's okay if you haven't <laughs> because this is the, the topic, the, the name that I'm calling it Undoing Mental Babysitting. And I will explain to you in a minute. And the reason I really wanted to talk about this topic is because I see many of us are still in the mode of like wanting to babysit ourselves, wanting to babysit um, our work. Uh, maybe even we have this type of ap- approach and attitude with our colleagues or with the people we're serving. And I really wanted to bring your awareness to this thing that we might be doing and how we can actually undo it once we see the consequences of it. And maybe the consequences, we don't see it either. So therefore, we keep doing it. And I will define this. And also, I will talk to you about how um, the consequences are and the process of how to undo it. And this topic, the the title of mental babysitting is actually the word uh, that uh, one of the amazing Korean coaches, South Korean coaches I know, uh, she used in one of the coaching calls. And um, her name is Simone Sol. And, and she was talking about this term. And I thought it's such a great term to also apply to the transitioning context and to also apply to our um transitioning within our mindset without ever changing within the work setting that we're in. So mental babysitting basically means how we keep treating our work, treating other people, treating maybe even ourselves in the way that we constantly need attention or we constantly need like protection, we constantly need to be guarded and watch out for and um, keep pursuing our fears rather than treating ourselves or treating our work like a mature, healthy, self-sufficient entity and have that as a baseline and then go from there to expect and build relationships from. Right. So, for instance, if to make things more uh, visible and clear, let's say that um, we're talking about our work. Right. A lot of us have maybe started this from our um, like right after university and fresh and wanting to do all the things, being available all the time to our work and then uh, doing everything our work needs. And we have started with that mindset and somehow we kept that mindset throughout our careers and we have this sense of if I don't prioritize my work that much like imagine we are uh, prioritizing our babies right when our babies are born I mean I'm not a mother but I see uh, many of my family members with their children uh, they always look at their babies as like the number one priority because the baby can survive without Uh, their attention without the parents attention or without the parents vigilance right so we we start off with that at like approach from the beginning with babies and that's normal and expected um, obviously for the baby's nurturing and uh, healthy growing but I fear that a lot of the times we treat our work that way as well like we treat it as if if we don't attend on time, if we don't keep scrolling our phones to see who emailed and and to respond uh, immediately or um, to respond in a way that's like, uh, uh, I acknowledge you, I received your email and then I will get back to you very soon. And and somehow we tend to think of it and maybe even like it's a professional thing to do, but I guess it really depends on what is behind it, right? Because oftentimes I feel like the way we treat our work often sounds like we do it more mostly out of fear of um, it can't really wait. I have to respond it. Uh, If I don't do that, then they will think of me in some way. Or um, I... 
it, my work can't um, do well on its own or I have to be there all the time, right? And the same attitude we may be having when we're working with other colleagues, for instance, we may say things like, um, I can't really delegate because they won't be doing it as I do. So therefore I have to be there all the time or I have to be micromanaging it or I have to be like explaining things so detailed that they um, they have to know all the things before uh, being able to execute it, right? Or uh, even if they did do something, then, then we are sitting and redoing it because we believe from the beginning that they wouldn't do the good job and then they um uh, and then we uh, start like redoing all the things do you see what i'm saying so that's why i feel like there is like a lot of that mental babysitting that's happening that's like um like a filter that we're receiving everything through that or we are projecting everything through that and then we are ex we are surprised when we're exhausted when in when we're like always present and always thinking about work or always thinking about uh who to respond and what to do this and that and like we keep doing a lot of that like i imagine that's probably how parents when they are new parents especially right they probably think and worry and fear and all the things a lot many of them i hear and therefore, they are exhausted a lot. And not only from physical taking care of the baby, but also like thinking about how to do the right thing, how to um, uh, nurture them in the right way and all the things, right? So I feel like that's the energy, the approach that we often have also to our uh, work, to our other colleagues, and also to the people we're serving. So think about it. The people that we're serving... Uh, assuming they won't be able to do X, Y, Z, right? Assuming that um, oftentimes I think uh, a lot of humanitarians we tend to use words like vulnerable, right? And maybe in some ways we also do it like with good intentions and and I understand why we are saying that, but also immediately that word, for instance, makes me feel like I need to help them. I need to help with everything I can or I need to help them in the ways that maybe I wouldn't have even considered had I assumed they have their own capacity, their own uh, intelligence and their own uh, resources to be doing uh, a lot of part of the work and I can do part of the work uh, to assist them if necessary, right? So you can see that babysitting mindset has this um, approach of, like wanting to be there all the time, attending to it all the time, assuming that it won't survive or it won't work without uh, without me or without my uh, uh, intervention um, and thinking about it a lot of the time and not really having that energy left for anything else, right? Then not having anything, like forgetting all the priorities that we have in our other parts, other parts of our lives and we just forget about that and then uh, we are, are surprised when we're not getting the results from other parts of our lives as we want to. So another way that I want you to think about mental babysitting is basically like stuffing your mind with all the things that like one thing in uh, our case, uh, humanitarian, it may be work, right? Um, stuffing all of our like mental energy and uh, the powers that we have with that uh, thing that we have then no space for anything else. Right. The consequences of that is obviously that we have uh, no uh, like readiness to be focusing about other things. And we don't really and even if we are focusing about other things, maybe we're feeling bad about doing that because we are so um, worried about work or we're worried about neglecting work. Right, like uh, some of the parents uh, tell me as well, is that when they like go out and, and have fun with other friends or with uh, family members or with loved ones, and then they feel like, oh, I'm not a good mother or I'm not a good father, I'm neglecting and all the things. But that's, I mean, when it comes to work, we want to have not only work in our lives, but also many other things in our lives, right? But 
because we're so into the mental babysitting is that we're not really having space or energy or even like mental capacity to be doing something else, like to be really doing something else, maybe like going out to with colleagues and going out with uh, other people uh, once in a while or occasionally, but then still coming back to work. That's not really um, prioritizing other things. That's just like occasional distraction and then going back. So I think I have abundantly described you the problem <laughs> and the consequences of that, right? So now the way that you recognize this happening is basically when you are like constantly thinking about one thing, right? It could be a work, maybe it could be something else as well. But mostly you know, with my humanitarians, I think this is the thing that's happening, constantly thinking about one thing, constantly worrying or like thinking that others may not do the good work or uh, I may, I, I have to do the work um, on time. I have to do this, this and that. And then even thinking about like during vacations or maybe even not thinking about like coming back and thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't have, excuse me. I shouldn't have left for so long now. Um, I have to do a lot of the things to uh, fix it or to, um, uh, like uh, fight the fires and all the things maybe right um, so if you are in that mental energy um, if you are also treating your work and other people or people you're serving in the way that they always need your detailed attention or your colleagues attention because you don't assume their highest self of being resourceful um, uh, having all the resilience and all the um that like um, mental capacity to be doing other things and to be um, accessing services in the way that um, like people in normal life would do, even though they are affected by war and we understand the consequences of that. And even then, even when we are providing services and assistance to them, how could we still like treat them uh, at the highest level, uh, meaning treat them that they are the most um, resourceful, um, uh, resilient human beings who have gone through this, uh, but they are still um, capable of um, uh, uh, recovering, capable of uh, uh, deciding for themselves, and capable of um, uh, receiving things um, in the way that does not diminishes their um, abilities, right? Does not diminishes their um, like normal day-to-day -day human lives or undermines, I guess is another word. And the same goes for ourselves. And especially in transitioning, I see a lot of us having this, um, a lot of mind drama of, oh, I only knew about work and now I need to, I want to do something else, but I don't really believe it's possible. And imagine that, like I was saying the in the other um, uh, random life uh, transition, uh, trans, trans, um, yeah, transmission uh, the other day, I was talking about how it's, understandable that because we have so much babysat this work that now we have we haven't really learned how to live our other lives basically because we haven't really spent that much with other lives is with other parts of our lives right like imagine um parents who have then um like their children gone off to universities and to being adults and uh uh, they are like having this big emptiness or big like space for, oh my God, how do I feel that now, right? So that will probably sound like with us as well, especially in transitioning. So that's why I really want you to think about how you can undo that mindset before even leaving the humanitarian world or even entering the humanitarian world that's also a good example right so even if let's say that you are entering the humanitarian world and you have been having that type of maybe mental babysitting mindset with other parts of your life and now going to um, work it will be so easy to just replace one with the other 
and that's probably not going to serve you either so that's why like get yourself to the place of recognizing how you might be already doing it and how to undo that because that consequences of that mindset is never going to let us to come to a balanced approach to life the way that we're wanting where we're wanting the work where we're wanting the personal fulfillment and we're wanting other things as well so here are the processes that i suggest you go through or uh, coach yourself on it or get coaching by me and getting yourself to recognize first how you might be doing that right so recognize what are the ways and how you are doing it and once you realize those things, then understand what's behind those actions. So what kind of feelings that are driving your actions? Some type of scarcity and fear might be behind them. Of like, I have to do this. I can't really neglect it. If I do, then something will happen, right? So recognize all of those. And then the, the thoughts and beliefs around that. That's the one thing. The second thing I would um, recommend you to think about is if you really treated your work, for instance, right? If it's, let's say it's a work thing, if you really treated your work as a mature, healthy, uh, self-sufficient entity that you get to be part of it, but not babysit it, how would you treat it? Right? So, what are the boundaries you would set for yourself? What are the expectations you would have with yourself and with other colleagues and people you're serving? Um, how would your work really be looking like? And I'm assuming that a lot of them will not be firefighting or trying to fix things, but rather trusting that uh, those people you, who you are working with will also do their part, you do your part, and uh, you also expect the people you're serving will do their part and then uh, within the reason, right? And then uh, design the assistance or your work around it. Not like I have to cover for everything, uh, like with the babies we would do it, like especially with newborn babies, we would say we would cover for everything, everything that the baby needs, we need to be providing it on time whenever the baby needs it, right? So all of those mindset will be shifted when we are treating our uh, work as a, a mature, um, self-sufficient, uh, systematically functioning entity where we get to be part of it and doing part of it as well. So that's why think about how you would treat that uh, work if you really treated it as this way rather than it needs my 24-7 on it, undivided attention and love and all the resources right? So the third thing that I would love to then uh, invite you to think about is who do you need to be as a person with what type of principles who actually treats that work that way? And this is, I'm finding it more and more a key thing is that when we consider ourselves the person who is um, self-sufficient who takes responsibility who trusts herself who is the person who says who has clear boundaries and says that this is how I'm going to create this work these are my standards right or my principles and um, I always hold myself to those standards and to those uh, principles and I also hold other people to their I assume they also have their own principles and their own standards and we um, interact in those equal terms rather than me being the adult as if like in this analogy me being the adult and them being the uh, people to take care of or to attend to all the time or the work to attend to all the time and I need to always like be available to do do you see what I'm saying, the difference? Because we really like, um, especially humanitarians, we tend to advocate for equal partnership, equality, equity, and amazing other concepts, right? Accountability, for instance. And I feel like that 
those words, a lot of them don't really get to be implemented in the um, in the mindset of people in how we are day to day approaching how's our attitude in treating our work treating uh, our colleagues and treating our uh, uh, people that we're working with in the subtlest way possible maybe we try to do that in so many other ways and I don't deny it but if we shift our mindset to being the like the the people who have our highest always in our mind that we are the powerful, trusting, brilliant human beings, others as well, people we're serving as well, and we all have amazing resources, everyone within us, and we are self-sufficient human beings. Under these circumstances, under the circumstances of war, conflict, or earthquake, or other circumstances, we have suffered and we want to help each other in that area and that's temporary. And for that reason, we can do X, Y, Z. But while holding the, the belief for ourselves and for others that we all have our resources that we can access within us. Um, and even if we don't have to access it at this point because of the situation that's happening, um, we can help get the help needed to do that. Uh, there are help available uh, for that reason, but still the baseline assumption, the baseline expectation, the baseline mindset, so to say, is of really seeing them as equals, seeing them as partners, seeing them as people who has the ability to do this or who has the ability to access, who has the ability to understand and all the things, right? So that's why I really want you to think about how we could also treat our work that way. And of course, emergencies might be the exception, but outside of emergencies, right? How do we treat um, our work that way? And how do we give ourselves then the the mental energy and the space for other things that is really important to us as well. And when we are thinking about that concept of ourselves, of being that highest self and thinking of ourselves in the highest self of uh, the person who can do so many things and so many other things, uh, or who can be uh, so many other things, right? So when we are thinking of ourselves in that way, what are the things that we need to believe about ourselves? And what are the things that we need to believe about other people, right? And that's so key. Um, instead of assuming like they don't have this, they don't have that, and they don't have this uh, experience or they don't have this uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge and therefore I have to provide everything or I have to be uh, explaining everything or I have to like uh, micromanage everything or I have to like put everything into so um, uh, detailed and complicated systems when I could just make it very simplified, assuming their knowledge, assuming their capacity, assuming their resources, assuming their understanding and assuming their highest level of solving problems, then I feel like we would be a lot chilled <laughs> we would have more space, mental space for other things. We would have clear boundaries with our work. We would rest. We would um, have more uh, time like being in the peaceful, connected place because we're acting out of our highest self and we would uh, feel more fulfillment for not trying to like chase around and fixing things and um, um, trying to take care of everything or everyone. I know I'm exaggerating with these words, but you know what I'm saying is that like, I feel like it's time to recognize that if we really want to hold on to our passion, hold on to our 
uh, or not only hold on to, but grow our passion, our fulfillment, our contribution in the highest way, um, expecting uh, big impact, big results, then it's time to really genuinely believe that they are as amazing and resourceful and intelligent and able uh, humans as I am. And when we all get together to create the uh, help needed, create the, the impact needed, we all get to do our part and that's what makes it amazing rather than one side trying to feel like we have to do everything or we have to provide everything or uh, undermining other people's abilities or undermining their resources, their uh, contribution, whatever, whatever, or like, like sadly believing that I can do it, but they can't kind of like energy, which will then exhaust us, will actually discriminate others, right? Um, even if we might be thinking that it's uh, a good thing, but we might be discriminating people's um, abilities by assuming that they can do X, Y, Z. Patronizing, condescending, and all the other words that uh, you probably know. And we don't want to do that. And I know that we don't want to, right? I don't, I don't, I know that like consciously and intentionally, that's not what we want to do. But I feel like when we are stopping that mental babysitting and we recognize that we, every which of us, have so much resources, so much powerfulness within us, so much capability, so much we can contribute to and we want to contribute to. And when we assume that within us and when we assume with others and the people that we're serving, then it will become more like how can we generate even more power to create the things we want to rather than how can we save or how can we help survivors and how can we like get into the energy of um, uh, being there uh, all the time and hand holding energy, which are not surly as so much as I really hope that you will use this tool of thinking and auditing within your own mind how you might be doing that already, right? And and if you are doing that already within your mindset in how you treat your work, how you treat others, how you treat the people you're serving, then think about how you can shift to the parts where you really hold yourself to the highest standard, where you also assume other people have their own highest standard in and talking to people with that um, with that expectation, with that esteem, right? With that highest respect. And then when we talk to each other that way, then we will always know that we will create something amazing together, the impact that we want, the 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 assistance that we want. And we will probably use different type of energy, different type of um, like contribution to make this happen. That's not exhaustive. That's not um, like negatively dreading type of energy. So I hope you're ready to do that and transition to this mindset of holding ourselves to the highest standards, the highest principles, in assuming the same with others and assuming and expecting other people and treating them having their own amazing resources so we can create the world that we want to so much love to live in. Okay, my dears, have an amazing weekend and I will be speaking to you next week.